it is great to reconnect again and talk about uh, all things supply chain. There's been so much happening on so many levels, and, and I can't help but think this is the moment for company leaders to step back and rethink about supply chains. Absolutely. So we should be thinking about the Panama Canal because the number of crossings have decreased considerably since uh, beginning about the four, in about the fourth quarter of last year because of low water levels there. Now, uh, of recently, we have seen that water levels improving. It's looking much better for a couple of different reasons. One, the rains are coming and El Nino should be moving out. The government is also taking some long overdue steps uh, with regards to building tunnels that will help manage the water uh, supply there in, in that lake. When the crossings for the Panama Canal decreased because of the water levels, a lot of that traffic shifted over to the uh, to the Suez Canal, <clears throat> which historically hasn't hasn't really been a, a big problem per se until the war in the Middle East. It's becoming a safety, truly a safety issue to try to get through there. And as I think about uh, these two pinch points of the Panama Canal and Suez Canal, Harry, you lay out just how, how vital they are. And we think about these extended supply chains uh, that we've had for decades. Uh, and as we start talking about climate risks, geopolitical concerns, and let's talk about the Middle East, we could talk about uh, Pacific and, and the, the concerns that are uh, going on there. We, of course, we have Ukraine. I mean, there's so much to unpack that these extended supply chains, I, I feel like anymore a business owner can't uh, can't look at it as just one singular event that they need to keep their eye on rather looking at the whole landscape of their supply chain and identifying all the potential vulnerabilities and thinking through all of the options and I, I even think uh, of current news you know the, we're talking about infrastructure and I think about the the bridge in Baltimore yes. you know and how does that you know how do we think through all of these potential vulnerabilities that play out into our supply chain and recognizing that the risks have grown here in in recent years absolutely you're, you're absolutely right David and this is something that is is not going to change it, it the the actual specifics may change you know we we may find a solution and in, in this hot spot but it, it's going to move somewhere else more than likely and i think it's more important than ever for uh, supply chain leaders to be looking broad and deep at what's going on in the world and and to really understand their supply chains in terms of where their products are coming from the sources the routes that they take uh, and what the alternatives are. But if you know where your your pinch points are and you have good uh, relationships with your suppliers and you have alternate sourcing points, so you're not you don't have all your eggs in one basket, both from a supplier standpoint or a geography standpoint, you're going to be in a much better situation than you would otherwise be. And just to layer on that, Harry, I also think about the uh, the value of the data or the flow of the data. Of course, we're talking about the the geographic infrastructure, but the the whole notion of cybersecurity, right? That's just another part of supply chain uh, disruption risk that has to be incorporated in this. And I, I can't agree with you more. And the, the whole notion of what you're talking about of, of risk management and and starting to really think about scenario planning and and almost game theory around uh, what are all the potential uh, disruptions, not trying to figure out what is the next disruption as much as preparing right. for the disruptions and running scenarios on what those disruptions are and how how we respond as, as a company. Do. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, to trying to pick the next the, the next hot spot is is really a fool's errand at this point. As I think uh, nearshoring and, and reshoring are uh, key parts of thinking about supply chains today. Much of our conversation has been about resilience and agility and, and thinking through the cost equations of, of a supply chain. Uh, so that that's one element for the case for reshoring or nearshoring. There is the sustainability, the environment angle. So there's the, the ESG uh, reporting that is starting to happen with companies that are uh, publicly traded and they're setting expectations on baselining uh, the, the environmental uh, numbers for 
uh, the supply chain. So there's a uh, the whole notion of reducing the footprint. So there's uh, a case around re uh, resilience. There's a case around the environmental. And then I'll add there's another case around what has happened in, uh, in the United States here in recent years. And I'm going to go ahead and call it an industrial policy or some formation of one. Mm -hmm. We look at the CHIPS Act, uh, the Inflation Reduction Act, the Infrastructure Bill, uh, the Department of Defense is thinking about national self-sufficiency, uh, that all of these together, so these, these three points, are really making the case for reshoring and, and nearshoring. And, and we're seeing it in, in many ways in the work that we do with uh, small and mid-sized manufacturers. Yes, absolutely. That needs to be reshoring, nearshoring, whatever, friend shoring, whatever you want to call it. It definitely needs to be an, uh, a part of the equation. It doesn't mean, mean that you have to have bring everything back, back home, but bringing it closer certainly has its advantages. And I think it goes back to, David, something you touched on at the beginning is total cost of ownership. You have to understand that these, that the cheap labor, so to speak, that you might get in some far-flung uh, manufacturing zone uh, is one thing, but it's not everything. There are things that, you, you, that companies will need to look at, particularly from a labor standpoint, as we're at 3.8% unemployment rate nationally now, workforce participation rate is, is better. It's almost returned. It's within about 600 basis points of where it was pre-COVID. Um, but the demographics are not uh, favorable in terms of, of that. And in fact, uh, let's look at Intel for just a second and the plant that the chips plant that they're building in central Ohio. They're already uh, hiring and training people for the operation of that facility, which isn't going to start until I think I saw last the end of 2026. So there's an investment there that has to be made. It's not that. It's not to say that's not the right thing to do. It's only to say that it's it requires planning and it's not free. And Harry, I, I think of um, and, and you and I, have, I believe, have talked about this in the past. The you know, total cost of ownership—that's a way to be thinking about supply chains. And and I, I I layer into that anymore, almost like a adding in some cost of not adapting or cost of not of or the the value of creating agility in the supply chains that this total cost equation has another element to it about agility and, and ad adaptation to it to what's going on it's a blend of both yes absolutely um, you know i think the good news in, in all this if if there is good news in it is that for the companies that recognize this and and see it as a, as the opportunity that it is because there's going to be a lot of companies that frankly don't adapt and they don't do this very well but for the ones that do it's going to provide a competitive advantage that they didn't have before and harry building on what you laid out there taking the time to be strategic about supply chain you know that is something that can happen tomorrow Yes. What that means, you, you've laid out some of the options of what that, that means and what that looks like and thinking about uh, inventory and holding costs, thinking about your expectations around just in time versus you know just in case, which is a little yes. bit of what we did uh, coming off the pandemic. You, you touched on the, the uh, information and that visibility. And I would add into that probably as well, that transparency with, with customers and the communication around that, the thinking Excellent. about... Thanks safety socks uh, and the redundant systems around you know that scenario planning all of this comes together but ultimately it's taking the time to make sure strategically it's part of the conversation that's sitting around whether it's boardroom the leadership team's room however we're looking at making sure it's a critical part of the uh, the planning uh, work of a company.